Uh, so what are some best practices for online uh, course design? You know, VIP Squared is, is fantastic. It's, it's why we do what we do. Um, we, are, we are here to serve our students, and that means um, following the VIP Squared um, protocol. So that's kind of what the swallowed support is that I love from SMEs who take the time to be conscientious, is that they reduce the outside interference that causes students to get frustrated and quit and, and lose their inner motivation, but he's still making it challenging for them, and it's related to the content and the objectives. They didn't take away the student learning, they took away the part that would be a barrier to the student learning. You know, being focused on, on your goal for that week, um, how you're introducing it, how you're reinforcing that concept, and how you're going to assess it in the end, having all that in mind is really important. Yes, we've talked about this, we've practiced this, now we're ready to show that we've learned this. Um, I think course of, uh, organization is a huge component in, in course design because we may think about things in a unit base as instructors and as curriculum experts, but for a student, they want to see the big picture and how it all fits together and how it lends to their overall development as a student and a practitioner. I think sometimes the trap we get into, the class becomes a series of sort of hoops that they jump through or, or obstacles, right, that are sort of discrete from one another. So I think developing a narrative for the course, and by narrative I mean a story, telling a story throughout the course where students can can work through sort of problems you know this sort of problem-based learning approach where they're working through problems uh, that are interconnected you know where the course is not just a series of assignments but is a, a larger whole then one of the innovations today is through gamification right for developing sort of some game type qualities and infusing them into course content and one of the foundational aspects of gamification is developing to some extent a narrative in the course. And that is again by telling a story. What, what do you want students to take away from the course as a whole? One of the things we have to do is, as instructional designers is encourage our SMEs to be creative with how they're asking the students to use the information and how, also how they're asking them to learn the information. If we're going to require them to read the textbook and they have to read for getting their assignments done, then why are we requiring them to read written lectures? That is just not the best way that people learn. We know this. We want to reach out and tap into different learning preferences and different modalities. So that means we need to decrease our reliance on written lectures, we can turn those written lectures into audio and video presentations. With video presentations, whether it's um, a blog-like type of entrance that you use with the webcam, or whether it's a screencast where you're demonstrating how to do something on the computer, you're engaging that video modality. Most of us are uh, visual-oriented learners. And even an audio presentation. With an audio, they can hear a voice. And since there's no video with it, they can listen to that voice just like you listen to a book on tape in your car, on the train, in the kitchen while you're preparing dinner. So it really offers greater mobility for the student. We really want to encourage all of our SMEs to fill our courses with engaging, thought-provoking um, tales from the field where in an audio presentation or a video presentation you introduce yourself and your expertise and you say here are some things I've experienced now I want to have you look for this type of information in your assigned reading and think about how would you address this situation that I just described. Um, other features such as Padlet.com or any kind of um, online bulletin board where students can take resources and, and graphically put them together so they can be organized, they're there for as long as you want them to be up. It could be a resource, things like Symbaloo, um, those are places where you can collect resources and students can contribute to that. I feel like any sort of collaborative online uh, resource is amazing for students to have. The piece that I think is often missing is the reflection about where they feel like they are with the learning, what they feel like they can do with it when they exit the course, what they want to know more about, and maybe even ask them to identify places where they think they could find that information. What I want to encourage our SMEs uh, to do is, is be brave and be bold. Yeah, Jordan, I like that. Be bold, be brave.